I feel for the people that bought one of these. So hopefully uh, before you guys buy one, you'll see this video and know to, to pass. This guitar was uh, an interesting thing because then my buddy Nathan reached out and said, hey, have you seen this guitar called a Coloss guitar on Facebook? So I went to their Facebook page and he, and he was right. It was like aluminum guitars with carbon fiber necks for 300 bucks. So I sent them a message through Facebook and I said, hey, I'm really interested in checking out these guitars and they were nice enough to send one out. Now, here's where it goes kind of crazy. The guitar showed up and this particular model is about six to $700. It's made in China. However, I'm sure like a lot of you, the appeal is not only is it cool looking, cause it's definitely a cool looking guitar, but the idea that it's a hollow aluminum body with this carbon fiber neck is really interesting because like I said, usually carbon fiber instruments are pricey. Uh, I used to own a Moses neck. I've had a modulus bass. Uh, they're always in the pricey range. So uh, you're curious, like how did they get it so cheap besides maybe saving on the labor costs? And the reality is, is that their attention to detail is really bad. But more importantly, there are serious design flaws in this and we have to talk about all those things, the things I've done to fix it and why you need to definitely wait, do more research and see before you actually order one of these. The first sign that there might've been a problem was it has this cool Coloss badge on the back that's inset into the guitar. And as you can see, mine is not inset, it's sticking out on one side, but it is glued in and there's no way to fix that. So there's a not a good sign to start off with with your first impression. The next thing you notice is the nut. When you bend the G string, it clicks. You can hear that. The main issue here is it looks like they used a 40 gauge, uh, 46 gauge uh, nut file to slot all the slots. They're extra wide and there's some issues there. There's also what looks like super glue has seeped out of the nut, which it doesn't look aesthetically very nice. And there's a gap here. So again, things that you don't normally see on a six, $700 guitar. Those are usually mistakes you see maybe in a hundred dollar guitar range. They put this interesting side dots that are not dots. They're like side ovals and they're brass and they look great until you touch them. And actually they're making me nuts. And here's why they're making me nuts. They pop out, which would be fine. I would probably get used to that, but not all of them. This one is inset. In other words, it's in the plastic and it's not popped out. This one's popped out. This one is, this one's level. This one's inset. This one is not level with the side of the neck, but it's also got a giant dent on the side of the neck where somebody took a hammer. You can see the, ha the ring of the hammer uh, on the neck itself. And you can see the teeth of the hammer where they imprinted into the side of the brass where somebody just smacked it with a hammer. So, and the only thing that's worse than that is the fact that it's not flush. So they just gave up. <laughs> so they hit it a couple times and said, well, all right, it's gotta get out to, uh, to the customer, I guess. Fret wise, they're actually pretty good. They're dressed okay, there's no issues, there's no sprout of course, and they are level. I don't have any dead spots on the guitar. Action out of the box was okay. I lowered it a little bit, just a little bit, and I did that without adjusting the neck. I did it all from the bridge because the bridge is a giant And that is the nice way to put this. First of all, as a tremolo, it doesn't even work. So if you got this guitar, if you have this guitar and you're watching this video, this is what you're going to have to do if you're stuck with this guitar. You're going to have to go ahead and add two springs to the back like I've done here. That's five springs and tighten this back as far as possible. It's still not enough tension, but it'll get you close. Then what will happen is now the bridge will be flush against the body and then basically adjust your saddles uh, height accordingly and that will help you. And then you got to set the intonation of the guitar, which is one other problem with the guitar. The only way to set the intonation correctly is to adjust these saddles to the point where three of them stick it forward and that basically if you use this tremolo, they would dive and stick into the body and dive into the body. So this is the only way it works. Now as a hard tail, the guitar is staying in tune. It's fine. It's... 
Now, like I said, if you already own this guitar, I would highly recommend that you uh, clamp the bridge down to and forget the whole tremolo system idea, and at least you'll be able to play the guitar and enjoy it that way. What I will tell you is that you're still going to have issues with tuning instability, and here's why. Usually when you see the word carbon fiber, especially used in an instrument like a carbon fiber neck, you'll see companies like Modulus, you see Rainsong, you see Acoustic Image, you see all kinds of brands. And the reason why you would want a carbon fiber neck uh, like this is because it's impervious to moisture. In other words, like a wood neck, it's not going to care that it's humid outside or it's dry outside. If it's uh, warm, extremely warm or extremely cold, when I say extremely warm, I mean 110, 120 degrees, uh, made cold is 10 below zero, and essentially it makes it very stable. What I've experienced many times when working on guitars is that when carbon fiber is done wrong or when it has too much cheap plastic or polymers in it or epoxies. Again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm just telling you what I've experienced working on it. You can you can figure this out because what happens is, is it moves. It does the opposite of what it, you don't want it to do, right? You want carbon fiber to be hard and you want it to stay. And so it doesn't move when it gets cold or hot or humid or dry. And so there's a way that I can illustrate this to show you why it's a mess. And here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm going to play a chord. And you can see it's in tune. It's a great chord. And I'm going to simulate the environment with this heat gun. And so what I'm gonna do is heat up the neck like you would have if you were on stage playing it with the lights from the stage or outside if you're outside in a venue and you're playing it. And again, right now the room I'm in is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna head turn on the heat gun to give you an idea of how hot this is. I'm just gonna put it on my shoulder to see nothing to concern yourself here with. It's not that bad. And I'm gonna heat up the neck. And again, I'm not trying to get the neck hot. I'm trying to get the neck as hot or as warm as it, I expect it to get if it had stage lighting. And to give you a reference of this, right, I'm going to keep touching the neck, okay? Right? And again, you can see my hands right there. So again, you can tell it's not, I'm not doing something so crazy that I'm trying to melt the plastic or go crazy with the neck. And so you know, I can visibly see the action has just risen a little bit, okay? And what I'm trying to do, the only thing I'm trying to be careful is because if I do heat up those, those brass ones, see, those brass things kind of, they'll get you. Okay, so uh, I think, I think I'm trying to go off feel. I think, yeah, I mean, it, this is like, you know, you're playing, you're sweating. <laughs> And uh, that's your chord now. Now that was extreme, that was a heat gun, but you can see already it's starting to go back in tune. As it cools down, it'll basically go back into position. I don't know if it'll go exactly into tune, but it'll get darn close. So you can imagine as you play it, as room temperatures change, it's flexing. A neck, a wooden neck wouldn't do that, and a carbon fiber neck, a real one, wouldn't do that at all. It would, like I said, it would take a lot of heat. It would definitely take more than what I could take to my face from two inches, right? So it's, it gives you an idea. And you can see, back in tune. So that's why this is a nightmare of a guitar. Um, and the design of this was horrible. I think what they did is they said, hey, it's one of those experiences I've seen many times. A company's like, hey, a new technology, we're gonna make tons of guitars out of it but they, they're not executing correctly. This is not a good neck. I will tell you this, I think now that I've got the bridge blocked, and I think as long as I don't use this for gigging, right, if you use it in your home, uh, and again, I think it's salvageable. In other words, I can play it, it get good, 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 good tones out of it. <laughs> Please don't buy this guitar. This is not, they're not ready to be sold yet. Uh, I think they could, but they gotta also deal with some redesign issues. First is this output jack design is horrible. They should have put it right here. I think I could drill a hole right there and I think if I can get the angle right, I think I could get it to where it would be 
there so it will not be as bad. Uh, it might be if you put it in your classical playing position, it still would be horrible. But this, uh, this doesn't feel good no matter what position you're playing in. So that's a design flaw for sure. Uh, electronics wise, when it showed up, the pickups sounded really weak and they weren't putting out any power. And what I did is I went through the electronics and I found where something was grounding out a little bit. Once I did that, the pickups weren't that bad. They're active pickups. And if you're into active pickups, I think they sound as good as any other pickups are gonna sound. It's hard to tell, you know, you could critique the pickups, but essentially this guitar is made out of aluminum and carbon fiber. It's going to cause a different tonality with the string. The string's gonna vibrate differently. Things are gonna happen that are different. And you gotta figure out what of that is the pickups and what of the guitar. And I don't have a reference, so I don't wanna guess, but I'm gonna say the pickups sound okay. <laughs> As this sits, this is a uh, this is not good by any means. This is a sad thing because it's one of those things where it looks so cool, looks so promising. The the guitar also comes in a kit, and the kit is 350, and I think at 350 it's just a much kind of cooler proposition. However, you have to understand, you saw the here you go. You saw that that just warming that neck up just a little bit, it's going to be a problem. So again, uh, I think. This is something I wouldn't recommend uh, to anyone right now. Uh, I'd like to see if Colos could do something better. You need to spend some time uh, kind of making sure it's right. In the meantime, they, they could put a wood neck on this. I saw some of their more expensive ones have wood necks. I think on the kit guitars, just ditch this thing and go right to a wood. I think wood onto the body, you'd have to get past a couple of the design issues with the body. But keep in mind, the kit ones don't have this bridge. They have a Fender style two point tremolo system. And uh, that obviously will be a lot better, a lot easier to deal with. Okay, so in summary, don't buy one of these until they have definitely perfected this process. And as always, I wanna thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. Till the next time, know your gear.